Hey, welcome to another live stream. Make it the game song bringer. I'm Wizard Fu. Welcome y'all. Today I'm still working on the uh, special attacks for all the bosses. I'm almost finished. I got three more bosses to do. Um, so I'll be working on Keel. He's the tower guy that has the sword and your swords clash together. Um, there's Metatron, the final boss, and the thief boss, the hidden boss. Those are all going to have special attacks if you have the cursed ring. So, start off with Keel. Put the player in the right position. We need Vel. Need all the towery items you would have at this point of the game. So, this is where the tower is. We have we're probably gonna have all those life containers. We're definitely gonna blink to let's get a couple more cactus containers. Maybe some more bombs. Um, fire armor, meditate, the hyper top hat, glove. Definitely gonna have a chip by this point. Really one shield, jib shield as well. Yeah, I guess. Okay, yeah. Should be a good setup. Okay. So, what special attacks is Keel gonna have? Um, one weakness that Keel has is the ice top hat. Actually, we should give him where the ice top hat. When he gets hit by the ice top hat, it's like you can just kind of dance around him for a minute and hit him a lot. I almost always get an icy um, weapon crafted, either the ghost sword or the top hat typically. And that just allows you to really just kick his ass pretty fast. So, let's um, give the player the ice top hat and give him some kind of attack that, or buff that makes him less weak. So, if you have the ring, I mean, you want to. Why doesn't the ring launch here? Oh, I guess because they're not... Yeah, it doesn't play the, the ring's launch animation because you, you when you first walk onto this screen, it's not apparent that he is a boss. So this is kind of like one of those boss fights where it starts off, you have some dialogue, and you're not really sure what the heck's going on. So that, there we go. See, that's pretty... Uh, that he's like, oh. let's first of all check his hit points. He's got 400 hit points with the Ring of Difficulty. Oh, that's without. Sorry. Okay, so without he had 400. Okay, and he's got 500 there. Okay, so a couple things. Either he could just not be weak to ice, so he'd be, or, or he could be immune to ice if you have the ring, or he could automatically freeze you if he is frozen. I'm going to start with that first idea, the automatically freezing. Um, there's, we need that word, that's not even a word yet, frozen. And, um, Frozen. Let's get that compiling. Start cooking this up into the AI system. This is similar to, this is like if frozen, which is similar, I would think, to if psychedelic. This is part of the if chain of logic. Yes. If subtype frozen. So if the render component
as the k render frozen flag. That's it. Super simple. Okay, now we're gonna do another thing so we can set something to be frozen. Oh man, maybe we shouldn't. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was just thinking, okay, I'll create some AI behavior that um, makes it so you can, you can freeze your target entity. So if it's so Keel would have the target of rock and would say, all right, my target is now frozen. But that's kind of hacky. Like it's, it would really like require, you know, setting a few things. And the right way to do this is to create an entity that just freezes the whole screen targets friends not foes so this is way simpler and we'll use all the right systems that are already in place rather than trying to hack my way through an existing system which is something I would have done as a younger programmer it's nice to be a wiser older programmer that's for sure okay so let's create that entity data weapons it's kind of like the Ren unsheath, or, or the laser I just did. Let's copy Ren unsheath to keel freeze.txt. Make C tags clear. So we'll create this entity that covers the entire screen and has the ice attribute and this will basically just freeze rock and another see another great thing about doing it this way is like what if rock is already immune to ice temporarily like make maybe rock got frozen just a second ago you know there's like you don't want to hack the existing systems because you're just going to mess up things use the existing systems by all means lime studios you gotta go to bed right on, man. Thanks for saying hi. I am doing well. I hope you're doing well too, man. Yeah, next time you have some more time, we'll, we'll catch up and I wanna hear how you've been, how your games are going. Yeah, so we just need Keel to have a special attack that launches a freeze if he's frozen. And we could probably put this above everything else. I know, yeah. Sorry, man, I'm in a different time zone right now. School day. I know, yeah. Cool, man. We'll get some good rest. We'll catch up with you later. So this will be... Um, freeze reflect or something like that. If mode zero-ish. Nice. One more semester. Woo! Right on, man. Does it matter what mode he's in? Let's see, mode one is like melee done. Stop. Balance update target. Yeah, I guess. Well, he shouldn't do this if he's in mode 10. So yeah, he needs to be in mode zero. If mode zero, if frozen, then Um, spawn when freeze at the middle of the screen, which is 210, 120, ground, abs. Delay 
however long the maximum ice would be. He probably has ice resist. He certainly does. So that means, I don't know, I'm thinking, let's just put two for a second. All right. Oops, not Ren Freeze. Keel Freeze. Let's open that Keel Freeze file. And we don't need a position. Category Shop Foe, yeah. Ice, yeah. Screen size, though. We're doing the whole size of the screen here. 420 by 240 by, like, really tall. Damage. This really isn't meant to damage as much as it is just freeze. I think if you make it 0.25 damage, it will use ice and cancel out that damage, but then damage rock when the ice is finished. It's an empty, yeah. If timer begins, set a timer. Um, remove yourself after the timer's done. That's it, boom. Okay, let's see if uh, we got that to functionally work. So we should freeze keel and you should do this freezing attack thing. Oops. Looks like we triggered some kind of assertion failure. Aha. Uh -huh. Keel unsheath C if. Huh? What did I do wrong? Hmm, I'm not sure how that actually crashed there. So let's just catch the assertion failure rather than seeing in the log. Because it should have been mode zero only. It's okay, we got the breakpoint set already. Give it another shot. Okay, well, we do need Xcode open anyways to try and let's verify this whole render frozen thing.
Okay, it took a bit a minute for that to kick in. Okay, I got a better way to handle this. Don't even necessarily need mode zero or delay if we just say if frozen and if count keel freeze less than one. Now, let's set a breakpoint um, when it spawns. And we should be able to catch it, trying to do its thing. All of a sudden it does. Oh, maybe because you, what? Wait a minute. Something is really fundamentally weird about this. If frozen, count, see there's no, there's no mode thing. Oh, maybe it's his timer. Okay, it's checking the number of count. What? Oh, that's all spawned AI, okay. I guess we should set a breakpoint here. It's hitting it, okay, well, shouldn't that be frozen? because he does have the delays. Oh, maybe it's not strong enough because I have a shield. See, he's 
got this delay already from all his other attacks. It's like when he gets frozen, he needs to get rid of his delay. Um, shoot. That's something that could mess up every AI. But I could put in some kind of little check to see if it's keel. There's a function called freeze in health system. This is when an entity gets frozen. Oh, it does. It, it's purposefully delaying the AI timer. Okay, well, Just, I'm going to try a little hack here. If name is Keel, and No delay timer. Just to see if this will even functionally work. Right? If taking away the delay actually enables this AI to freeze him in return and also doesn't allow him to run around anyway, so like this delay might have been necessary to keep him from like moving while frozen. Oh, okay, it's spawning that, that entity at the bottom of the screen. Oh, and it's just running that, okay, it actually does work because it keeps on doing that um, over and over. So this should have a timer. Oh, wait a second. Um, spawn key, please. Yeah, so this needs to be spawned at zero. Why? And this probably does need a delay. What's up, Raidu? What's up, Balil? Bilal? Did I get that one right?
I forgot how to do the OS slot. Oh no. Damn it. What's up everybody, welcome. Okay, so why does it keep on spawning these keel freezes? Maybe it's not right. Oh, they changed it? Oh. Us. Oh, gosh, it's so hard for me to keep up with everything. Thanks, man. I learned something new today. Welcome to, uh, welcome to the live stream, making the game a song ringer. I've seen your guys' names before, I think. Yeah? Yep, still working on it. Songbringer's out. It is released. It's on Steam and Xbox and PlayStation. Uh, but I'm working on this big, free, major update. And then after that, I'll be working on the iOS version, the soundtrack. And that's it. After that, Songbringer is complete, and I'll be starting on the next game. But that's months out. Like It'll, it'll take a few months just to do the iOS version. Okay, so I'm, I'm working on this attack right here where this guy auto-freezes you if you freeze him. If you have the cursed ring. And right now it's spawning a bunch of these enemies over and over. I'm not sure why. Oh, let's, let's analyze the if count. Behavior count. Oh yeah, the fearless hyena. I I do I do remember that. Yes. How could I forget? <laughs> Yeah, that's been a while. That's definitely been over a year, right? That's like, yeah, it's been a while since we chatted. Okay, so I got a breakpoint now set. So when he gets frozen and he tries to count, oh, what? Oh, that's different. Okay, we need we need to check somebody else. If has bits e dot render dot flags. Okay, we have frozen. Then we set this breakpoint. This is the specific one we're trying to catch here. Oh, the button graphics for the Steam controller. Whoa. That was, that was a while ago. Man, so much, so much stuff got done for Steam controllers. They are so, ugh, this is a lot of work. It's a lot of work when you already, you already have written all this code for other controllers, Xbox controllers, PlayStation controllers, every kind of controller you can think of, and then Steam has to go do it all differently. But I see how it is from a player's perspective. It's kind of cool because the Steam controller is its own unique beast. Some people totally prefer the Steam controller. Some people prefer their good old Xbox controller. I'm personally liking this SNES 30 Pro controller I have right now. This thing, oops, sorry for the jittering the camera there. Um, this thing is sweet. It's got, it's like the, it's like a SNES controller, 
It's got all these old buttons. It, it's like almost the same weight as an old SNES controller, but it's Bluetooth wireless and it's got these um, two R buttons. So it's got triggers and buttons on the top. And then it's got these uh, analog sticks as well. So it's like got everything that a modern controller has, but it feels like an old school SNES controller. I love this thing. And it's great for traveling too. I'm, I'm kind of like, I'm not in my home country at this time. Um, so this is like really slim and it's like easy to take traveling. And it has rumble. I really prefer this thing right now. Okay, we're frozen. All right. We're looking for mask freeze reflex. Stir what's stir about one? Keel freeze. Right. Get the number of ids that match this keel freeze thing. Oh, this might need a name. Oh yeah. Oh, there we go. That's the problem. We either need the profile component or the name. So this is going to fail. Ids will still be zero. Or no, wait. Oh, that worked? No, what did it? No, yeah, it definitely failed. Why does this say size one when it's actually was size zero? Anyways, let's get back here to this function. And we should have Ids that are zero at this point. That's why it's failing. Yeah, OK. I see now, I see now what the problem is. The D-pad, you know what? I don't think it is, you're right. The D-pad was freaking excellent on the SNES. So true. I've just been using the analog. Yeah, uh, me too. I have yet to find a good D-pad in today's decade. Yeah, agreed. Either that or today's controls are just different. Like today's controls are kind of made for analog sticks. I don't know, that's probably just a cop out. <laughs> okay, let's get rid of that, we don't need it. And um, we can pretty much close Xcode, I think. And OK, so the trick to getting that to work will be this keel freeze thing. Either needs a name component or a profile component. We'll just give it a name component. That's a little bit easier. Keel freeze. So there, now um, keel can find those entities. So it's not just going to spam the screen with a bunch of these this time. It'll create one at a time. That way it won't kill Bell either. Still, it's doing a lot. I think it's doing a lot of them. Either that or it's hitting a bunch of times. That could be it. It could be so big and it lasts for so long that, oh, I'm in the wrong window there. Um, yeah, that's what it's gotta be. Keel freeze, damage. See, it's doing timer 1.0. That's like way too long. 0.2 is the maximum you wanna do so it doesn't, um, last longer than an entity's invincibility duration. So now we should hit him. Okay, it looks like he did two of them, but that might have been because he was frozen. Oh gosh, is he doing it a bunch of times? Oh, fight pads, yeah? Oh yeah, that's the thing. I do want the analogs. I love my analogs these days. But a good D-pad 
is excellent, especially for things like that. Like, like I would imagine you'd use it for like Street Fighter and stuff. Oh yeah. Okay, it might be because Keel has a doesn't have a delay here. You can just well, we can verify that by paying attention. I'm going to slow down time and turn on debugging for the AI. Freeze reflect, freeze reflect two. Yeah, he did it twice. Okay, that makes sense. So he needs a good delay. Um, he needs a delay about the same amount of time that he would for a duration if he has ice resist. So there it is. Starts off duration is 2.1. Otherwise, the duration is 1.1 if he has ice resist, which he does. So this delay, he needs to delay at least 1.1. Let's do 1.2 just to be safe. And we should only get one of these keel freeze things at once here. Oh, right. I bet they're awesome for side scrollers. Yeah. Oh, totally. Like, especially when you want to, I've just thought about it. Yeah. When you want to be like, like jumping is always the up button or the up on the D pad. And you want that to be super accurate. So if you're trying to use, you know, the analog stick, sometimes the analog stick, you can like, you can try and do the up direction, but it's a little bit to the left or a little bit to the right. And that can kind of like give you a, di accidentally trigger, trigger a diagonal direction. I totally understand what you're saying there. That's a good point. It's like less fudgy, more more accurate. Okay, let's make, um, this is working well now. Okay, let me just verify it one more time. And then what I'll do is I'll make um, this, the, that hack I did for Keel, I'll make that an accurate thing. So I can get, I can make a, an AI flag. In fact, let's start creating that AI flag right now. No, it doesn't matter. Okay, slow down time, hit him with the freeze. Freeze reflect. See if it goes to freeze reflect too. No, I didn't do freeze reflect too good. Okay, so let's go get him frozen again. Freeze reflect. It does one of those attacks. Still got that delay going. Boom. Perfect. Okay, great. It's working now. Yeah. Yeah, the debug logging on the screen. Yes. Let me show you a little bit more. I have a lot of cool debugging commands that helped me immensely making Songbringer really help the swiftness of how I, how fast I could create AI and debug AI, which is 80% of creating an AI is debugging it. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, totally. I can totally see that happening with Street Fighter with analog. Yeah, there's a lot of really great debug info. That's all. It's I got it all keyed to this one button where I I can toggle through the different debug states. So let me show you. It starts off at debug state. Um, I'm turning on invincibility so we can just ignore him while we're doing this. But uh, yeah, so there's this one which is verbosity zero, basically. This is verbosity one. It shows the tick in the top left. The current frame rate, I've got it locked to 30 frames a second while I'm streaming. So it normally runs at 60, but um, anyways, 30 while we're streaming because the software eats up so much CPU to stream. Um, the number of entities, because this is an entity component system, 
the number of sprites on screen, how what the percentage of sprites that are important. So I have this sprite cache and um, there's important sprites and unimportant sprites. The unimportant sprites can be overwritten. So it just shows you how many are important. And then how many children of the main scene node. So there's seven, almost 7,000 nodes in this scene, but they're not all necessarily sprites. And then there's, uh, you've got, you can't really see it very well, but in the top middle, there's the current area, which is 1197. The, the exit point, so this this exit here goes to 1198. Um, the pattern, which is boss A, the, and then the item that this, this area has, life container. And then the top right is the camera position of the, out, there's an outside camera, an inside camera, and then the current memory being used. So that's verbosity level one. Verbosity level two, this like turns off a few of those top things, but then turns on um, red collision rectangles showing all the rectang all the rectangles that are collision enemies basically. And then it also has the AI. So it's got a real, I'm slowing down time here so you can see it's got a really detailed view of the AI, what current um, sequence the, the AI is running. M is for what mode the AI is in. T is the current AI's timer. D is the current delay running for the, uh, the AI. So that this one is, I use this one all the time for, especially for debugging AI. Um, and then there's this one, what is this? This is weird, I don't know if that's, I don't know what that was. <laughs> I think that might have been a bug or something that showed that. I don't know what that was. But anyways, this is the Z height of every block. You can see like towards the middle of the screen, these blocks are a little bit higher. And then underneath each one of the entities, it's showing the current position and the current block position. But then it's also it's also kind of like hodgepodging things together. The top left now shows you the current story. Um, story parameters and stuff like it's it's it ran story tower keel 1c before this and uh this area is currently zero percent complete so if there were a bunch of enemies on the screen they would the completion would go up as you defeat more of them so like if there were 10 enemies you defeated one of them it would be 10 percent complete and then the actions are what actions that are the story is about to run um, and then this is the, my music debug. So like, um, this is like showing it's, the music is currently at 51 beats per minute. This is bar number 28.3. It's running the current event called boss, which is the boss music. There's the drum note, which is like, um, this is the, uh, basically, um, all of the music in the game is procedural. So, well, it's procedural melody. So each one of the drum notes can be different. It's either, um, B, C, or C sharp. There's the index of the music, which goes from zero to one to two. There's the intensity of the music, how much the music is muffled, all these other random notes and parameters. And then these are all, all the things on the right are current sound effects being played. So, Ghost Sword, it just launched the Ghost Sword. So sword Clash, that's where it clashed the swords. There's like all these looping sounds, fire sounds running. And that's it. That's basically all the debug mode visuals I've got. And then there's speeding up time, slowing down time. There's um, hurting yourself. I'm currently invincible, so you can hurt yourself. You can hurt all enemies on the screen. You can turn on god modes. You can run through walls. And then you've got invincibility. So all of that helped helped to make Songbringer so much quick, more quickly than I would have without all that debug stuff. I know, right? It just took like a while to do, to like talk about all that. <laughs> Sorry if I got into a little bit too much detail there. Okay, so we've got that working somewhat well. Let's try. I'm gonna try it out with sound on, so I can um, see how it feels. Oh, oh yeah, I'm gonna make this this more pro. Yeah, let's do that. It's cool. 
I actually like this attack, it's sweet. Whenever you freeze him, you get frozen. And he freezes you for a little bit longer than you freeze him because he's he has ice resistance. I, it would be the same though if I had ice armor. Okay, that's cool. Let's just make this pro and we can check this step of it in. Um, there's one thing to make this just better. Basically, if there's an AI flag, uh, AI, no, KAI. There we go. So we got no sleep. Let's do a, basically an AI flag called KAI no. Call this no freeze delay. So if an AI gets frozen, they won't be delayed by the freeze. We need to make that a word. Excellent quit bim. Oops. Okay, but while that's compiling, um, we've got the word hooked up. All right, so in health system, let's make this more pro instead of just this hacky thing I did here to just make it for keel. Now we can do this in a professional way. So if the AI has bits e.ai.flags, k AI, no freeze delay. completing that oh well then we do that and then keel can have that flag and that should be all add this to his AI component oh looks like there is no special AI component you can just add it flags no freeze delay. Oh, I should probably, okay, there is no. Just checking there wasn't an um, Xcode running in the background. Okay, once that's done compiling, we can check it out, make sure it works, um, verify it, you know, like, uh, I could turn it off, turn it back on, you know, make sure it's good from both angles. Okay, so it should still work as it used to. Good, it froze me. Cool. Now, if I go like this and I make it so this flag isn't even in existence anymore, it shouldn't work. Um, before I do that though, I want to verify everything that's changed in this. Good, this does look, this is a pretty short commit here, but adds a pretty cool attack to Keel. So he's got sequence freeze reflect. If he's frozen and there's not any Keel freezes in existence, 
spawn a keel freeze, and delay 1.2. Now we've got the word to or the AI behavior if it's frozen. So if the AI subtype behavior is frozen, then return if the render component has the frozen bit. Um, we've added the word frozen and no freeze delay. No freeze delays. The correct bit shift up there. We've got behavior frozen is a war is a enum. And then we've got this special thing here in the health system when something gets frozen and it's an AI and it has the flag no freeze delay, then it doesn't have a timer. Boom. Okay, so just confirming that if I hit him with the freeze now, he his freeze won't really work because he'll have a delay. And I can verify that with this. Oh wait, it worked. Oh, maybe because he was didn't have a delay already. Oh, why is it working? There. Okay, that there you go. That was a good example of it. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but that's probably because the freeze, whoops. It's based on this duration here, oh. Okay, I guess I need to see this. All right, let's debug that. got to open up a debugger when question marks appear above your head. That's when you know it's time to set a breakpoint. Step through it slowly so your so my feeble mind can understand it. Okay, he's getting frozen. He should not have. Okay, good. He does have a timer, but does it have a, yeah, it has a duration, even 1.1. 1 .1. Okay, yeah, see that time he didn't do it. Whoa. This time, he didn't do it. Okay, but yeah, I remember it was working before sometimes too, erratically. So yeah, this is good. All right. So we can turn that back on. And we'll test it one last time. Make sure it is indeed working now, every time. Not just erratically. Freeze defense, it's pretty cool. Cool. Works. Okay, let's check this in. Step one. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, 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 oh. Before I do that, it is very important that I give him this one little test here. This needs to be 
if frozen, and if they have the player has the ring, quantity ring of difficulty is greater than zero. So let's test this now. We should be able to, he should be able to do his ice freezing de defense. Um, but then if I take off the ring, there we go, cool. And if I don't have the ring, he should not do this. Cool. Now he's back to his old behavior, his easy mode. <laughs> easy mode. Regular difficulty mode, I guess. Okay, this is ready to check in now. No freeze delay. Yep, I checked all this. Cool. Oops, we need that keel freeze. Whoa, I got a little confused there. What's going on? Um, there we go. Okay, make Keel have a frozen defense attack. The player has the ring. Okay, um, so that's really not that involved. It kind of would be cool to do something else here. One more thing. Um, We could do something like where he warps around the screen. It's only 3 p.m. I've got at least another half an hour I could stream. Okay, yeah, that's enough time to do another attack. So, or, or mode of travel, like, I'm thinking he can warp around the screen a bit. Which means he would need an animation, though. What a blink. I don't know. I don't know. That might be really complicated. It depends on whether I do, did a warp or a blink. Uh, what's up, Shriek Studio? I am in Thailand. Pom pasa tai nitnoi kap. Okay. Um, do I want to do this or not? Yeah, man. Uh, I'm, I'm actually from the west coast of the United States, but I am currently in, in uh, a little bit of life reset mode. So I'm over here, kind of, I'm living in Thailand. I'm not really traveling. I've traveled here before. I love this place so much, I decided to come back and live here for a little bit. So I'm here for a few months, um, and it is, it's pretty awesome. You're in San Fran? See, I just left San Fran area, basically. You were in LA for two years? Cool, man. Yeah, thanks. I was in San Diego for 12 years, and then I was in Oakland for four. So yeah, now I'm over here for a little bit. But I'll be back. I shall be back. What time is it there? It's late there, right? It's like, if it's 3 p.m. now, then it's 11 p.m. there. Is that right? No, midnight? Is it midnight? Yeah, it does get hot. Oh, yeah, it's midnight. That's right. Yeah, I'm I always do the math. But I'm actually ahead of you guys. It's weird. Like I'm for right now or if, well, it's midnight for you. So it's already tomorrow. But like for all, all of most of my day, I, is, 
I've been ahead a day. It's weird. You, was, you squashed a bug you've been fighting for hours? Good on you, man. Way to go. That's awesome. I think I just decided that I don't want to do anything else right now because with Keel, could make him do a blink sort of attack, but that is super complicated and would add so many animations. Or I could just give him a warp around the screen, but Ren already does that. So this, this auto freeze, I think, is going to have to be good enough for now. Yeah, a day ahead. Yeah, a day ahead with four hours buying, exactly. Yeah, yeah. That's weird. I'm like, I'm a day ahead, but nine hours behind. Yeah, or 16 hours ahead, whichever way you want to look at it. It's weird. It's easier for me to do the math just thinking of it nine hours behind. But that always messes me with my head because I don't know what day it is. <laughs> but I rarely know what day it is anyway, so time zones are totally weird. So um, what bug did you just squash? And what am I going to do next? There's a, at least a half an hour left here. Consult my notes. I'm going to call Keel finished for now. Because I don't want to do a super complicated thing right now. Hmm. Okay, I could work on the thief boss. Oh, an audio? Somebody was sharing a sound effect with the main character? Oh, weird. Oh, weird. Crazy. Okay, I think we're going to work on the thief boss here. I gotta take a quick little break. I shall be right back. And then we'll work on the hidden thief boss. Oh, that's weird. So the sound effect was playing on, like, right near you at full volume or something, even though the enemies were at a distance. That's crazy. Cool. I'm glad you got it fixed, man. It's awesome. No, dude, don't worry, don't worry. If I if I didn't if I wasn't open to being sidetracked, I wouldn't live stream. I I know by now this is like my six hundred and fortieth. This is my six hundred and fortieth live stream, or no, not not all live streams, but six hundred and fortieth video. So yeah, I know I know when to do a live stream and when not to. Like some sometimes I really need to be in the zone. Sometimes it doesn't matter, and that's what I'm here for, you know? I, sometimes I just like to share and take it easy and chat with y'all. I'm only here for a couple hours, and I work for many hours per day anyway, so I can, I can get my focused work done late at other times of the day and then get sort of this, like, less focused work done while live streaming. I'll be right back.
Okay, so let's close out this other stuff. Let's set up, um, set everything up so we can fight the thief boss, the hidden boss. One of the most difficult bosses in the game. Because she's invisible. It's freaking invisible, man. Uh, I think she's at sphere two. I'm trying to find where that is. 10, four, zero in this world. Uh, let's put her, yeah, here, 10, four, zero. I think that's sphere two. We need the super bombs to be able to unlock her. So let's get super bomb container and super bombs. Hmm. It's not this one. Okay, we need uh Sphere one, one four zero. Oh, ten four zero, one four zero. How convenient. Oh, hey, Shriek, thanks for the Twitter follow, man. Okay, so here we are. Um, got to do which one first am I supposed to meditate I think I'm supposed to meditate first I can't remember I haven't done this in a minute this isn't part of my regular speed run route it's not speedy to, to get to the hidden boss okay so we've got it in that state There's some truck driving by right now advertising something in Thai. I don't know what they're saying, but it's funny. Nice, man. Thank you. I appreciate that. Okay, let's equip the super bombs. Save again. So I don't have to do that twice. Can you guys hear that on the stream? The the truck talking in Thai? Oh, thanks, member seven. Appreciate that. I'm working on the sound, the soundtrack work. So, um, hopefully that will be next month. I'll be doing the soundtrack and finally releasing that. You know, I've been meaning to. It's just there's a little bit more work to do to improve the quality of all the music tracks. Just a little bit, right? I want to make sure the bass is really hitting well. Um, and so I've got the equipment I need here in Thailand, and I could basically do the soundtrack out here. But yeah, so the, the music's gonna get just like a, maybe a tiny bit better quality, and then it'll be ready for a soundtrack release. So that would be cool. Uh, yeah, I make my music in Ableton. Um, oh, I hope this doesn't mess with the stream if I open Ableton right now. I don't think it will. But yeah, I make all my music in Ableton, um, and I make a lot of sound effects in Ableton as well. And I use Massive a lot, so like, um, this, is a, this is a track I worked on recently, this is kind of like this, it's sort of a remix of the main theme song, but it, um, it's only kicks in in this one special part of the game. It's really supposed to hit you hit home with the main theme melody. That's not too loud. Oh yeah? Logic, reason, sweet. It's clipping like crazy though, because like it's using C tons of CPU because I got everything I like even the kicks are massive instruments. So there's a lot of stuff that's generated from oscillators. So it just takes a lot of CPU. That's why it's clipping crazy weird. 
Um, it doesn't clip for me normally, but when I live stream, my live streaming software eats up so much CPU that it just basically sometimes make it makes it really hard to work on music while I'm streaming. But anyways, I love Ableton. I've used Logic before. I love Logic as well. I've used GarageBand even. And back in the day, I used to use Fruity Loops um, before it was even Fruity Loops Studio. And I've also used Acid, but I've never used Nuendo or Reason or Cubase or any of that stuff. Oh, thanks, man. I appreciate that. But I don't believe it. I don't believe everything you've created is garbage. I've never heard any of the music you've written, but I don't believe it anyways. I know you probably got some golden tracks in there, man. And then live's been like just dying on me every time I close it. I don't know what's up with that, but it only happened recently. Oh, I know, right? Yeah, those are some old things. I started making music in 2000, I think. Oh, you don't even do music. Oh, oh okay. Oh, right on. Cool. Well, there's a lot of creativity to just making sound effects. As you well know, I'm sure. Okay, so let's plant the super bomb. Fight the thief boss. Okay, so since we have the ring of difficulty, the attack I want to give her is, um, wait a minute. Why didn't that unlock her? Uh, hello? Shoot, did I mess this up recently? Oh no, there she goes. That's weird. That was super weird. Well. Okay, so. She's super hard because she's invisible. She, so, um. She kind of spams the whole, um, bombs a lot. It would be nice to give her a ranged attack other than bombs, and like a, an enemy ghost sword would kind of be cool. Like Rock's ghost sword, but her, she would have a ghost sword too. Because, or maybe like a ghost katana or something like that. She's got this cool sword she fights with as well. She's named after a sword as well, so it's, that makes sense to give her a sword attack, right? Okay, so let's do that. Um, I'm just gonna reuse the ghost sword art for now. Hell, I'll even reuse the ghost sword itself. So how do you kill her? So you have to freaking, you have to like, Follow her footprints. So that's the that's one thing you can do to see kind of where she is. She has footprints that she she uses to walk around the screen. And if you follow those, you can kind of know where she's at. Otherwise, there's just like swing your sword and hope or hope you hit her. And believe it or not, that is a really fun way to fight this boss. There's no other boss like that in this game where it's like you can almost close your eyes and just swing the sword and hope you're fighting her like in fact if you put your headphones on and you you just start like really you can actually close your eyes and swing the sword swing the sword swing the sword and if you if you can listen to the sound and see if you hit her you know what i mean based on the sound she makes when she gets hit and then you know you're hitting her it's kind of a cool thing because it makes it sort of like an intuitive boss fight you know what i mean it's like luke Luke, when he puts on that blast blaster helmet thing and he's like trying to fight those little or practice with those little robots and his, his lightsaber that are shooting the lasers at him while he's blind. That's kind of what I think of it like. Oh, wait, we don't need to be here. Let's go to data weapons. I think we could throw, yeah, let's copy Ghost Sword to Ghost Sword Foe. So we're going to make an enemy Ghost Sword. And she'll be able to launch that.
This is the thief boss. Um, let's open up the ghost sword foe. Oops. Ghost sword foe. Okay, ghost sword foe is gonna need a different color. Oh, that is just, um, that is determined by the launching entity. Okay, so instead of collision category shot friend, basically it's just shot foe. Everything else can kind of remain as it is, I think. It's no gravity, no auto stop, can't be pushed, moves in eight directions, it's, has this melee attack category. Oh, category is not ghost sword for its melee attack. This is shot foe. Right? Do I? How is it for me when I play Songbringer? Is it? Do I know it too well to enjoy it? Um, mystery part of the secret sauce in the game. Yeah, that's basically it. You've said it right there. Like what made Songbringer continually enjoyable for me was that it was procedural. So every time I got tired of a world, I just did a different world, and then everything was in a different place, and I could. It was like in a new adventure every time, and that was kind of the core concept of Songbringer. Is like I wanted something that was that felt like an old school action RPG, just like an old Zelda game or Secret of Mana or something like that. And But yet it was procedural, so you could have a different world each time. Um, so, and, but it's consequently been the game's greatest strength and greatest weakness. Um, and it all depends on whether you like procedural or whether you expect to like actually procedural games. Because I frequently have found that people that expect that procedural games suck won't even try Songbringer. And that sucks because they don't give a game a shot that might actually please them. Um, so, And then other players that are open to the concept of procedural games, or maybe on the other hand they're actually so into procedural games like me, um, I've gotten a lot of, lot of great praise and feedback from players that have liked Songbringer, of course, because it's, you know... It's a procedural game, so it's kind of your cup of tea or it's not, but I find that a lot of people expect, a lot of people have expectations uh, on, the, on the end of procedural games being sucky in general, which kind of sucks, but oh well. Yeah, I've been doing games, I've been doing game development for over 20 years now. Um, but I did take a healthy long break and kind of just did music only for a while. Thank you, man. Yeah, what have I done prior to this? So um, when I was uh, when I first started learning to make games, I learned programming. So when I was in high school, actually, I learned Quick Basic. That was the first language I was learning. Right? I was learning Quick Basic. This is back in DOS. Like there was no Windows. We didn't need, like there was Windows three point one. But that sucked. Nobody used Windows at that point. Um, so people were still using DOS. I was using DOS and made games at Quick Basic for a little bit. And I quickly went and started learning the C language so I could actually make games that were fast because I realized Quick Basic sucked for making games. You can't really make an actual game with Quick Basic. Um, so, but yeah, anyways, I was a programmer for a while, like almost a whole decade. And then I was, an, I was a musician only for a whole decade. Like, I kind of gave up on making games for a while. I gave up on programming. It was just like, I just want to make music. But it helped. Like, it, it taught me the art side of things. And, and, and music is mathematical in a way. So, it, like, it, I kind of could relate some of my programming and, and math um, skills with music. And um, so, yeah, that was cool. And it kind of helped me with my creative side. And then just recently, about five years ago, I was like, wait, maybe I could actually learn to make art too. And um, I started watching all these YouTube videos on making art. And um, then I started learning to make pixel art. And the next thing you know, I launched a Kickstarter for Songbringer. And luckily, the Kickstarter succeeded. And, um, and even better, like a, a publisher got interested in, their publisher's name is Double Eleven. They helped me with Songbringer, they helped with funding, they helped me get to um, like huge events like PAX East and GDC and help with getting all like, you know, PR so the game could get good coverage and stuff like that. 
And uh, they also helped get the game on consoles. So without them, the game wouldn't have gotten on Xbox and PlayStation. So I'm eternally thankful to the Kickstarter backers and my publisher, Double Eleven. Because um, without all that, Songbringer wouldn't have happened. Um, so yeah, it's been quite a journey of learning game development, you know, like aspects of game development over the 20 years of stuff, but I've mainly been a programmer the whole time, so that's kind of my, my greatest strength is programming. But um, yeah, so it's been good to learn art though, recently. That kind of like completed it all, the art side. Mask in neutral, does that need a mask? I don't know, maybe? Okay, this, this might actually work. Oh, we don't need the top hat stuff. And we don't need the ice, fire, lightning, poison, fear stuff. Actually, we might just want to leave it as the fear sound. Call this launch ghost, but use the fear sword sounds. And maybe just call this launch. I'm not sure if we need launch ghost. <laughs> Okay, so we've got a ghost sword foe entity created. Now we can go to um, go back to Thief Boss and add a different mode. If she, if you have the ring, she can do this new attack. You're three years into it, yeah? Sound effects. You're branching into programming. Cool. Nice, man. Yeah. Um. That's cool. If you have ambitions of doing it all, um, I recommend um, starting all of them now. You know what I mean? Start learning a little bit of art and programming right now. And music. Yeah, all those. And one easy way to do that is to try and make your own games, but small ones. I would definitely recommend making the smallest things you can think of try and get a game finished in a week you know something scoped so small that you know you could finish it in a week and maybe you do end up spending a month on it or whatever but like you you'll learn so much by doing that right learn learn the learn enough programming to move a character around and do what you need for a basic game learn enough music so that you can create a a song or two for that game. Learn enough artwork that you can create the, just a few different characters and backgrounds and boom. You know what I mean? Once you've got, once you've got the basic, that's the, that's the important thing is learning the basics of all those will give you the confidence you need to progress and get really good at all of them. Yeah, definitely. Use your time wisely. That too, that's very important. And consistency for sure. Keeping at it. Yeah. These are things, many people give up, many people think they don't have time, many people have excuses, but if you can rise above all those things, you can just persist, you know, and, and you, can, you can do it. You can prove everybody wrong. So she's got all these, I think, I think a good place to put this would be here, right before her bomb sequence. So we'll call this Ghost Sword. A. We need to do this only if the player has the ring. Um, what else? If mode zero, probably. Probably if mode zero. Um, we probably need like. Random element to but um, I'm gonna comment that out at first so she just does it all the time. Oh, also if there's no no ghost sword foes on the screen. Um, if there's yeah, if she has a target. Um, I'm 
Yeah, and if the target is somewhat far away, uh, that should be good. Let me just launch a launch a ghost sword foe. Yeah, good chatting with you too, man. Good to do. Good to meet you. Um, good luck with everything yourself, and uh, chat with you next time. Peace, man. So we can go dir target, face target. Long, face target? <laughs> face target. Makes me think of the word yogurt for some reason. Uh, launch, go, go sword. Bow. Probably give it a color manually. And then delay a little bit. Oh, definitely turn on path none. Delay one to two or so. Um, all right, let's see what we got. Let's see if this even can launch a ghost sword. Let's hope it works. Certainly would be great if this worked on the first try, but. That's an unrealistic expectation. Hell, all expectations I feel are fraught. Carol. So it, does it not do it because there's a, sto there's a story action already running? I think that might be it. So Belle just did her story action there. That is wrong. We need um, Thief Boss. Let's check this out. This should have an override. Oh yeah, this needs a oh, freaking override. It's very important. Spawning the thief boss. Damn. Well, well, well. So you could basically I just fixed a bug where you can waste a super bomb. That's good. Good bug to get fixed. Is that the only way she gets spawned? This is where is the thief boss already exists. This is where it spawns the thief boss. Yeah, that was the only one. Okay, so that one needs to be overridden. Probably all of these could have override safely. But we'll just do that one for now because that's the only one I'm checking, debugging right now. I don't want to just willy-nilly throw stuff in there and not test it. Okay, so there's a story element running right there, and I'm gonna trigger this other story element. Oh, very good, it turned off that other story element and triggered this one so we can fight her. I just noticed that sphere just disappeared, super unartistic. Yes, it worked! Sweet, she can throw those daggers. Awesome. I mean, she's doing a little bit much there. It's kind of cool because you can tell where she's at too. I can't believe that worked on the first try. Okay, it needs a new color though. Why is it always purple? Is that because the ghost swords are purple? Um, raw, sprites, no shadow ghost sword. Oh, they are purple. Okay, we need a different color. We need to color those somehow. We add purple. What if we did color black, but not additive? Maybe? Oh, it looks like I did the wrong kind of bomb. I'm like, why didn't it work? Okay, that didn't work with the color. I mean, it did change the additive noise, but... Okay, maybe I just need to do some custom art. But wait, why does the... How does the 
ghost sword turn black when you have the fear sword? This is the question. So I'm going to the launch ghost sword function. This is where Rock launches his friendly ghost sword towards enemies. We've got launch fear, launch poison, fear sword, here we go. Okay, so the, the ghost sword gains the category fear. It gets more damage. It gets to be a pat, opaque. It does have a freaking color, black, and then a blend funk. Huh. Why didn't it work then when I did um when I did that very same thing? I had color black and blend funk normal. That's what that is. Color zero zero zero. Oh, I did none of zeros. Is that right? Oh, that might have been it. And then opacity was one eighty over two fifty five. About 0.7. Hopefully, this kind of gives it a mean look, mean and enemy ish, like, and like different than rocks. It's a double bomb there. Thorough. Gosh, I really gotta do a, an animation for that rock disappearing because this just looks horrible right now. Wait, why is it? Oh, because that's what the sound is. I was like, why does it? Why does it sound like that? It's because that's what the sound sounds like. Okay, I could do a custom art and make it all black. So just launch, 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 launch. Yeah, I guess so. Let's do that. Raw sprites. No shadow. Ghost sword, star. So hopefully it's not too many of these, right? Yeah, that's not too many. Wait, it is already gray. No, what? It's already gray. Yeah, man, so why isn't it? Why isn't it black? In the... What? Even this is... Hold on. The Ghost Sword East. It's purple. But that's not even used. Okay, I'm kind of confused. Why? Why are you not the color black? Oh, is it giving it a color in the launch? It might be. It might be it. Ask AI system. Um, behavior launch. I think it does have a color. Yeah, color is white. Oh, this is it. It's got to be. Okay, lifetime direction, lifetime color. The direction is the compass direction. Wait, where's the color? Oh, there it is. Okay, yeah, so we need to set the color when we launch it. Hopefully. He's still blue. Oh, 
gonna need custom art anyway, I would think. But, oh, this is freaking driving me crazy though. Why is it freaking... Okay, let's get Xcode open. Okay, I gotta close the stream down pretty soon too. Oh yeah, oh dang, I really do. It's like 345 already. Okay, I'm just gonna debug this real quick and then that'll be enough for the stream. I'm trying to figure out the freaking color. Why is the color the wrong color? Answer me that, Xcode. Alright, color starts as white. Did it treat that zero? Oh. Oh, it didn't even pick up the color. It didn't even get the color. I'm guessing because it thinks it's zero, and that's a thinks that's a number. So we need, we need this to be like, something like that. Hopefully it would make it a string instead. Other than the opportunity to work on this, has it been a success for, for other people too? Um, you mean like for players that play it? I think so. Did I get the feedback that I hoped for? Yeah, definitely. You know, in, in, um, you get both kinds of feedback. Uh, like you get praise and you also get super duper hate. But um, I've learned to get thicker skin and just be, you know, be not susceptible to the hate. And I've learned to really enjoy the praise. Did people notice the Zelda influence? You know what? That's, that's where some of the hate comes in. Like, people, people gave it hate because they're like, oh, it's just like Hyper Light Drifter. But I think most of those people never played Songbringer. They just looked at the two visual styles and compared them. Honestly, I think Hyperlight Drifter looks better, in my opinion. And Hyperlight Drifter has its own unique, clean art style. Like, Songbringer has its own dirtier, almost, pixel art style. I don't know. I don't. So, yeah, I think the people that are, like, the core fans of the game really noticed the Zelda influence and really gave me great feedback and amazing praise. But then there's also haters out there that 
just you know say stuff like oh it's just like Hyperlight Drifter but I'm pretty sure they never played Songbringer because the two games play much differently but yeah when you're when you're creating any kind of thing like this and putting it out there to the world you're gonna get hate just as much as not just as much, but you're going to get hate and it's going to feel just as impactful as the praise you get. Even though the praise you get will probably outnumber the hate, like almost a hundred to one, practically. Okay, let's see if we got the color that time. Or we can look at B's values. Go sword for. Yes, this time it's a stir val. Okay. So it didn't it didn't do it last time because it was all zeros. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Definitely. Yeah, and it was, I don't know, for me at least, it was something I just had to kind of go through. I had to go through the phase of being hurt by all that, you know, being hurt by the haters, and then getting stronger and realizing that the hate... You know what really helped me the most? I'll share this. Um, what helped me the most was when I finally realized that haters are actually trying to help. Because if a hater just hates and doesn't say anything, right, they're not trying to help. But a hater that actually says something to you, somewhere deep down inside there, they're probably trying to help in some way. Otherwise, they just would have remained silent. You know what I mean? Okay, yes, maybe there are a few haters out there that are just trying to get some attention. But I think that even in the end, those people too are trying to bring up some kind of points that if you take it in the right way, can be very helpful. And when I finally realized that, that's what made it all, that's what gave me the thick skin. I was like, wait a minute, these people are actually trying to kind of help in a way, you know what I mean? Even though they're calling my game a piece of shit and call, or calling me an asshole or whatever, you know, they're actually, they actually care. In some way, deep down, they actually care. Otherwise, they wouldn't have said anything. So, I don't know, that helped me. I'm not sure if that's actually what you're even asking, but that's, uh, that's the answer I gave you. <laughs> okay, so this should work this time. Yeah, there we go, color, stir valve, right on. Okay, so that's probably what the problem was. It was getting a color. It was thinking it was supposed to be white. It was starting the shot, setting the color white. Okay, so now it should be black. Oh yeah, there they are. They're black now. But black is the wrong color. It's not quite right. It's going to be like red or orange or something. To go with Kusanagi. Let's look at Kusanagi's colors. Open up raw sprites, shadow, kusanagi, idol. She's invisible, I forgot. She's got some animation where you can see her. I think her cloak animation. Try that one. Here we go. Oh yeah, she's got this reddish color. Let's try that her hair color for the sword. So there's 70, 27, 27. Oh, we should probably brighten that up though before it gets to brighten that up to be there. Okay, let's make the ghost sword that color now. And 
in the actual ghost sword itself. Ghost sword foe. We don't need a color. And additive will probably look good actually. We can take away that opacity now. Ah, there we go. Okay. Oh man, I'm glad this uh, went so smoothly so fast. I may actually end up creating art, special art for this because this ghost sword kind of looks like rocks in a way still. So at least taking away some of the... Hey, doesn't Keel already have a ghost sword too? Hey, oh, Keel has a ghost boomerang. Oh there, that's cool. Yeah, I guess Rock never really uses that color, so that helps. Oh, she just murdered Bell. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Sometimes you have to look really deeply into that, what totally seems like unjust criticism, but when you look deep enough, you find some little nugget of positivity, or at least something you can improve about your game based on that criticism, right? I'll tell you, I got some really just super duper bad criticism on Steam a couple times, and I, I finally realized, wait a minute, there's actually some golden nuggets here deep in this. I can actually improve Songbringer because of this person's what seemed like unjust feedback. Yeah, I forgot how much you can just get her in this mode where you can keep hitting her. So maybe she should, her hurt animation should be shorter if you have the ring. Or she should be hurt for less time or something like that. So it makes it less, or less easy to be susceptible to this soul. This is super cool. I love her having a, a sword attack like this. Well, she keeps attacking Vel though. Oh, sorry, I think I... Wait, did I... Oh, never mind, I didn't close it. Okay. Um, let's see, I'm going to do one more thing before I close the stream down, and that's just to make her target... Um, target only rock. If you have... If you have the Ring of Difficulty. Because I saw her, she was just totally... Yeah, here's another one. Target nearest friend. She was totally targeting Bell. And that's not what we want. There we go. So we got to select sequence of quantity, bring it to zero, zero, target hero, otherwise target nearest friend do that for anything else where she's trying to set a target and she's choosing between the hero and the nearer friend. This one we can just do not if you have the ring. There we go, cool. All right, so this time, she should not be able to target Bell because we have the ring, and it makes it much more difficult fight if she's always fighting the hero, Rock, not Bell, or the secondary hero, player two. There we go, good. So let's get, try and get Vel really close to her. So she normally would, yep, she normally would have started targeting Vel by now. She's targeting Rock only, cool. Awesome, okay. Well, that is gonna be it for today's stream. 
Um, thank you all for watching. I appreciate all of your support. Um, this is uh, this is pretty cool to have almost. There's only one more boss to do. I, well, I have to finish this boss. These little upgrades here. Make sure it plays well. Test it. Make sure it plays exactly how it used to. For if you don't have the ring. Um, and then there's and then there's I gotta do the final boss. But that's it. I'll be done with all of the content for this update. This major update will be pretty much finished, and then I can spend the rest of this week just fixing some bugs, and then I can up like do a release to Steam on the, on the actual Steam release, get this all prepped, and then basically hand this all off to Double Eleven while they get the console versions ready. I can be working on the uh, soundtrack, and that'll be February's work. So, yeah, so that's it. Thanks a lot again for watching. I appreciate everybody. We'll catch you all next time.